Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about the paraneoplastic syndrome. In my previous video I discussed about the introduction to the neoplasia, the molecular mechanism behind the neoplasia. You can watch these videos also. Going to the paraneoplastic syndrome. Uh, firstly, the definition. The definition will break it to understand that. Uh, there are some symptoms which are present in the cancer bearing individuals which we cannot explain. Uh, we cannot explain them either by the local or the distant spread of the tumor. That means we cannot explain by the local invasion or the metastasis of the tumor. And we cannot explain them by the elaboration of the hormones which were indigenous to the tissue from which the tumor that arose. And these symptoms uh, complexes they are known as paraneoplastic syndrome. We will understand the definition better when we will understand about the each and every paraneoplastic syndrome. Now what is the importance behind the paraneoplastic syndrome? Their importance is that sometimes they represent the earliest manifestation of a neoplasm and therefore have a diagnostic importance. Secondly they can itself pose a clinical problem which we need to treat. Thirdly, they can mimic a metastatic disease and therefore they can confound or confuse the treatment uh, of the patient. So it's very important to recognize uh, these paraneoplastic syndromes. Now going to the paraneoplastic syndromes. They care uh, of variety of types. Firstly, they are endocrinopathies. Then we will discuss they are some related to the nerve and muscle, some related to the skin. Going to firstly the endocrinopathies. Now the most important and most common uh, paraneoplastic syndrome associated are the endocrinopathies and out of them also the Cushing syndrome is the most common endocrinopathy posing as a paraneoplastic syndrome. Now most common cancer associated with the Cushing syndrome is the carcinoma of the lung and also that also small cell type of carcinoma of lung and this is a very important MCQ question. The reason behind the Cushing syndrome here is release of corticotropin or corticotropin like peptides. Okay. Now going to the second endocrinopathy associated that is the hypercalcemia. Now the hypercalcemia can be present in variety of cancers and the two journal processes are uh, reason for this hypercalcemia. Firstly is the osteolysis which is as associated with the cancer like carcinoma of breast is a osteolytic cancer. Secondly there is certain humoral substances which are produced by these neoplasms which leads to hypercalcemia. However the thing to remember is the hypercalcemia if it is due to skeletal metastasis that is not a paraneoplastic syndrome as we understood from the definition of the paraneoplastic syndrome. Now the humoral substances which are associated is known as the parathyroid hormone related protein. The related protein, this protein is very identical to the parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone normally leads to hypercalcemia. However, in the tumors, the hormone produced is parathyroid hormone related protein. Now this uh, and the PTH hormone, they share a common receptor. They are very identical, therefore they share a common receptor leading to the hypercalcemia. The tumors associated with hypercalcemia are carcinoma of breast, lung, kidneys and ovary and within, if we talk about lung, the tumor here associated is not the small cell type, it is the squamous cell carcinoma. Now we are discussing about the other endocrinopathies which are associated with the paraneoplastic syndrome is the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion in which ADH hormone is secreted in excess. There is hypoglycemia associated with certain tumors like ovarian carcinoma where insulin or insulin like substance is released. There is carcinoid syndrome. The carcinoid syndrome the reason behind is release of serotonin or bradykinin by certain tumors and the tumors associated are hepatocellular carcinoma, the bronchial adenoma 
there is polycythemia which is associated with certain type of, type of tumors due to release of erythropoietin um that is this is bit of learning process uh now going to the second uh of the paraneoplastic syndrome which is the nerve and the muscle syndrome nerve and the muscle syndrome then we will discuss about the skin disorders which are associated with paraneoplastic syndrome and lastly we will discuss about the osseous changes now going to firstly the nerve and muscle syndromes now nerve and muscle syndromes they can lead to variety of conditions ranging from polymyositis from myasthenia gravis the cause behind these syndromes is not properly understood but there is certain uh, part which is involved like in the autoimmune diseases in some cases we can find that the antibodies are induced against the tumor cell antigens and these ant antibodies also cross react with the neuronal cell antigens uh, the reason behind is not known why the immune system which recognizes the tumor cell anti uh, tumor cell antigens it also recognizes the neuronal cell antigens as foreign and it mounts an immune response leading to the conditions like misthenia gravis now the second uh, Dermat dermatological disorder the skin disorder which was associated uh, as paraneoplastic syndrome is acanthosis nigricans now what is acanthosis nigricans here in the picture we can see they are the gray gray black patches of hyperkeratosis which are present on the skin and such lesions are sometimes associated with certain type of cancer and therefore can be of diagnostic importance also now the third condition for the osseous the uh, uh, the related to the bones is the hypertrophic osteoarthropathy now what is hypertrophic osteoarthropathy now we can see in this picture the patient here will present with clubbing of the digits there will be clubbing of the digits there will be periosteal new bone formation especially in the hands and also in the hands the metatarsals the metacarpals the proximal phalanges and arthritis can also be associated this is also uh, commonly seen in association with various neoplasms lastly going to the vascular and the hematological changes which can present as paraneoplastic syndrome there are like thrombosis can be seen there can be non bacterial thrombotic endocarditis there is something known as red cell aplasia which is seen very importantly only in the thymic neoplasms now we will briefly discuss these also going to the vascular and the hematological manifestations firstly the trozo syndrome now this is associated with certain type of cancers Uh, like carcinoma of pancreas or lung this is also known as migratory thrombophlebitis second uh, very important seen vascular hematological manifestation is dic disseminated intravascular coagulation and it is mostly seen with the aml and aml also variety of m3 that is promyelocytic leukemia and there is a condition lastly there is a condition which we were discussing that was endocarditis now sometimes certain tumors can lead to formation of bland small fibrinous vegetations on the cardiac walls and certainly a certain advanced type of tumors like mucin secreting certain adenocarcinomas they can lead to vegetation formation and these uh, vegetations they can even break down and form emboli and lead to a certain complications in the course of the cancer so it's very important to recognize them uh, this was all about the paraneoplastic syndrome do like share and subscribe to this channel thanks for watching this video bye bye